this week you are going to be going through chapter eight and chapter 10. Chapter eight covers uh, basically data types that are in SQL Server. And there's not really an assignment for you to do from this chapter, but you will be creating your own uh, SQL database as your term project. And so you'll have to use the database or the data types when you are creating the columns in your different tables. So you do need to know what the different data types are so that you can use them in your project. So as you go through here, it kind of talks about all the different data types. And so you'll just need to keep these in mind uh, when you are creating your term project. Uh, then once you're done uh, reading through that, uh, you are going to go through chapter 10 in the book and then go through the lecture demo. And so this actually goes through how uh, to do database design. <laughs> and this is um, a skill that you get much better at the more you do it. Uh, so nobody is an expert at this <laughs> after doing it their first time. Um, so we are going to be learning about normalization. Uh, and there are seven different normal forms. When you create your own term projects, you need to normalize through the third normal form. Um, and on the certification exam you'll be taking at the end of the semester, they do expect you to know um, how to normalize through the third normal form. Okay, And so um, basically when we're dealing with normalization, there's a little different terminology. Um, your columns are called attributes. Um, the rows are called entities. And the process for diagramming the database, where you show your tables and you show which tables are connected through primary keys and foreign keys, that is called entity relationship modeling. Um, you also will see it as ER modeling, or it's even abbreviated as ERM. Okay. And so before you can do this type of diagram, uh, you do need to uh, pretty much figure out all the data that you're going to store. Uh, and then you divide that data into its smallest component. Uh, you group the data uh, into kind of logical tables. And then you figure out what the primary key is. Uh, you And that's the unique identifier in the table. You figure out what tables you want to connect, you know, which tables need to share information. And then if uh, a table that you want to connect doesn't have, you know, any kind of common field, which it won't, um, you take the primary key from one table and you place it in the table you want to connect it to. And then it becomes the foreign key. Okay. Um, once you set up these tables, then you actually go through the normalization process, which sometimes ends up generating more tables. Uh, and the last thing you do is create indices. So um, this kind of walks you through that process. And uh, typically, to find out what data you need to store, you start looking at forms for the business. These are paperwork that they fill out, that's a really good source for finding out, you know, what the different fields are. Uh, and once you're ready, we go through this normalization process. And the reason you do it is to minimize duplicate data. So basically, no data should be duplicated, except the primary key. If you put the primary key in another table, so you can connect it, that's the only thing that should be duplicated. Um, and 
eliminating duplicate data actually makes your database more accurate. Uh, it makes doing your queries actually easier and simpler. Uh, the whole database retrieval process is much more efficient, um, especially uh, if you need to do updates. Um, if you have the information in one place, way easier to do updates than if you have it stored all over. Um, so this just pretty much walks you through how to do everything. Um, and when you take a look at a table like this, um, there are some issues with it as far as inserting, updating, and deleting. And so um, this talks about those anomalies and anom anomaly is a problem. <laughs> so um, and it kind of gives you an example and then we go through and normalize it. So I try to give you a lot of examples on how to do this and why you do it. Okay, and so um, as you go through this, after you get the uh, database normalized, we do take a little deeper dive into the types of relationships uh, between tables. And what you're shooting for is a one-to-many relationship or a one-to-one. -one. And um, a one-to-many would be something like one customer can place many orders, okay? Um, a one-to-one -one relationship would be an employee can have one set of benefits, okay? So those are just kind of two examples. Um, here, we're looking at students and courses. Um, so, uh, and we're also looking at zip codes. One zip code can be long to more than one student. One student can have multiple course details. And then if we look over here, we've got courses and course details. And you'll notice that we have two primary keys. So we needed two things to make these unique. Um, so semester and course number together are in unique combination. So they are the key. Uh, so one course can be on multiple students' course detail. And then we talk a little bit more about one-to-one, many-to-many is uh, not good. If you have a many-to-many -many relationship, you need more tables. Uh, usually you create a, kind of a middle table. Uh, it's called a bridge table. And that table connects to, in this case, it would connect to student and to course. And our bridge table is the course detail table, okay? Because you can't connect students and courses directly because that is a many-to-many. So as you go through here, I have lots and lots of examples, and uh, hopefully that will help you understand it better. Indexing is something that confuses students. Um, and basically, uh, when you create a table, your primary key is automatically an index. Um, and so that is a clustered index. And you can only have one clustered index, and that is your primary key. Um, but any of the other columns can um, be used to create an index. And if you have a column that you're going to do a lot of selects on, uh, maybe you're using it in the where clause a lot, it does kind of make sense to do an index on it because it'll speed up your uh, retrieval of your data. Okay, so uh, this whole process is something that um, you kind of have to apply to start to understand it. And um, the more often you do it, the easier it becomes. So the textbook assignment is um, basically going to introduce you to creating ER diagrams. And then we're also going to take a look at a spreadsheet, which is quite often used to store data. And we are going to kind of break the, ta the data into multiple tables. Um, so I do have a video that shows you how to create an ER diagram using Microsoft Word. Now, if you prefer to use, if you have other software that you've used in the past or you're familiar with something else, 
It's fine to use different software. I chose Microsoft Word because you all should have Word. Um, as NMC students, you get Microsoft Office free. Um, so you do need to use, you know, the desktop version of Word, um, not Google Docs. Uh, and if you don't have the desktop version of Word, just send me an email and I can send you a link where you can download it because all NMC students can have it for free. Um, so this kind of walks you through how to create these tables. So you're going to be creating these tables. Uh, the names of the tables are bold and then the names of the columns are shown below. And this is uh, basically the tables that are in your book. And then you're gonna identify the keys and the foreign keys and the primary keys. And then we're going to do some join lines. So it'll start to look like this. Okay. And then once we do the join lines, um, we are going to be checking those tables for normalization. And you'll notice that uh, we went from six to seven, and that was through the normalization process. And then once we've got it all normalized, then we add the one symbol and we add the many. And I will tell you that um, some smart students figured out that instead of adding this many symbol, they could just add the number eight and rotate it sideways. <laughs> so it doesn't matter to me if you do the infinity symbol, uh, but with a rotated eight, or if you actually add the symbol. Um, but that is the first exercise. Um, and then the next exercise is actually downloading an Excel uh, spreadsheet. And you'll notice it's just one big file and then kind of walking through and normalizing that thing. Uh, so there is a video that walks you through that and you're gonna use this file. And then once we have the, you know, the spreadsheet into multiple tables, uh, then uh, we can do the ER diagram. Okay, and this kind of walks you through taking that spreadsheet and kind of putting it into the multiple tables. Uh, let's see. And here is a Word document that you can actually download for the ER diagram. Um, and if you want to see how your finished product will look, I did include that here. So um, here's the original. And then this is the normalized version. And so what you turn in should look like this. Now to get more practice doing this, and this is optional, um, I've got another example here that you can work through, but this is not anything that you need to turn in. It's just for your own practice. And so here is a spreadsheet. Uh, you go through that same normalization process. And then um, here is the key. And this is not something that you need to turn in, but this is just a key you can double check with. Um, so that is the assignment. Okay, And uh, you'll notice I did include a couple of handouts. Um, this one is on normalization because a lot of times people are a little fuzzy on that whole process. So here's a handout on that. And um, functional dependency is something that you will see on the certification exam. So this basically explains what that is uh, because it is not explained really in uh, the book or anywhere else. Okay, so make sure you're familiar with that. Uh, and that is what we are working on this week. So if you have questions or run into problems, let me know. Uh, have a great week. And make sure you walk through all of these steps. Uh, completing the chapter 10 assignment is really important because next week, 
you're going to be doing something similar for the first milestone on your term project.